On this episode of The Flipside, we've got a special edition where we're pulling all the incredible leaders from Southwest Thrive. Got my old buddy Andrew here, but we've got Matt Brown from Sandals Church right now on The Flipside. Hey everyone, welcome to The Flip Side. Pastor Kurt with you as always, joined by my compadre and close pastoral friend. Oh, it's so touching. Andrew McCourt. And we've got one of your best friends yes. here, a man I'm just getting to know this week. We're down at the Thrive Southwest Special Flip Side Edition, and we're joined by Matt Brown from yes. Sandals Church here. Come Glad on. to be here. Super excited, pumped. Yeah. Good to be here. Yes. Matt, we always start the show with the most important thing in the world. It's Christian crack. It's yes. coffee. Yes. Haley, Haley, working so hard here at Thrive. Oh, she doing serves multiple me first. Things. Of course she does. Of course she does. Thank you, thank does. you. We have a local brew, the Joshua Tree Coffee Co. Oh, okay. And it, it is a light roast Ethiopian. Wow. Do you love those African coffees? I do love Can the African coffees. Okay, I'm confused. It's Ethiopian. from Joshua Tree, but it's Ethiopian. Get yeah. It's come from Ethiopia, but they roast it in Joshua Tree. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to warn you. Matt so, is a brilliant man. The content's going to be off the chisel on this one, so get your cup of coffee. Share yeah. this right That's now. That's good. So someone else can log in, and we're going to get into picking the brain of one of my new favoritist Thank you. Uh, leaders, <laughs> Matt Thank you. Brown. Yeah, I think I actually have family that go to, to Bayside. Do you really? Wow. Yeah, because so my you're from Sacramento. Yeah, so I have family in uh, Auburn. So mm-hmm. my uh, Aunt Grace, uh, all her family, so my great Aunt Grace, uh, when she died, I used to say, my mom would say, let's say Grace, I would say, Grace died. <laughs> so, sorry. It was a little dark, oh. but funny. It was dark, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's, that's my humor. But uh, mm-hmm. my family still lives, a lot of them live in Auburn, Placerville, um, and some of them attend Bayside and attended Adventure before it was Bayside. Mm. Right, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, so if you're watching from afar, yeah. Adventure is one of our campuses that we just did yeah, yeah. the last two years, and those are all little communities surrounding us. So you're like you're like one of the family. You grew, you grew up actually in the backyard, literally, of yeah. Capital Christian Center, one of the greatest churches in the Sacramento area. Yes, I used to swim in their fountain. I think I got arrested Beautiful. a few times on their campus. Beautiful. Wow. Yes, well, I didn't know it, but my friend was a thief, and he would steal while we were there. But, You're, you know, when you travel together, and everybody this, gets cuffed. Guilty by association. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And this, I never stole anything from Capital Christian. And this friend, was this Andrew you're talking about? Yes, hey, whoa, it whoa, was. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened to Capital? <laughs> Stay to Capital. Capital. <laughs> okay. All yeah. right. Hey, so, Matt, you are many things. You're a man, okay? You're a husband. You're a father. Yes. Um, you started this church called Sandals, and we'll talk about that later. But you're another thing. You are an Iron Man. Yes. So explain to people all about that. Yeah, eight-time Iron Man. So we were in Hawaii together for my 40th birthday. And I don't know if you've ever seen this, but you just see... Just, you just see the most beautiful things on beaches. I mean, mm-hmm. things that are gorgeous. We don't talk a lot about it on church, but right, you yeah. see things that make your eyes go, wow. Mm-hmm. And so my wife and I were in a Jeep. We were driving down the beach in Hawaii, and the most beautiful thing I ever seen ran by us. And I told my wife, pull over, I got to get a picture. And um, his name, <laughs> right, see what I did there. Uh, well, he did a lot of drugs, but he's the most, fa- he's, he's a seven time, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Triathlete? No, no, no. The race in France. Um, Oh, uh, Tour de France. Tour de France. Seven-time winner, Tour de France. And uh, he was running by. And it turns out... um, Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. No. Yeah, shirt off, spandex, glistening in the sun. Fantastic. And we're the same age. Like, is this post-shame, pre-shame? This is pre-shame. Pre-shame. Yeah. So my body did not look like that. Yeah. So I had to tell my wife to put the camera down. And I said, I am going to do it. Turns out we're the same age. Same age by like like three weeks. Interesting. And he was there to compete. This is before he got banned. He was there to compete, and he actually won the Ironman that week while we were there. Wow. Set a did. record. Of course he did. Of course Set he did. Set a record, yeah. Yeah. Did well uh, on the swim, did well yeah. on the run, yeah. killed the bike. Yeah, well, so I mean, he ruined that. He ruined preaching. the Tour yeah. de France. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that's where the journey began. I had no idea how hard it was. I'm not a swimmer. Yep. Uh, ran track in college and uh, played soccer, so running was fine. Cycling's easy. Swimming, tough. Yeah. And so labored through the swims. Mm. Um, you know, 
two and a half mile swim is enough to like Ooh. think you're going to drown multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And it's with your closest friends who are trying to drown you. So. Right. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, and they have changed it uh, since they started because so many people drowned. Really? Yeah, so now they go like four at a time, four at a time. Every three minutes, it's four at a time. Okay. When I first started, it's three thousands of your closest friends go. Right. Well, so if you're in the middle of that in distress, no one's yeah, really seeing you. Yeah, in they'll distress. find you when you're dead ten minutes later. Wow. After oh the crowd goodness. goes, wow. and that happened. So I think they got sued. So they fixed it. So, but I'm retired now. My last one was actually here, December 9th. Um, actually finished right across the street. So at the tennis center, that's where you finish. And um, did really good. Had a terrible swim, but set a record for me on the bike and the run. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's so, so impressive. Talk to us about endurance. What what does that actually leadership lessons? Yeah, from so an Ironman leadership, right, is, is the long game, and that's why I think uh, Ironman is so helpful because in an Ironman, it's not just a physical component. It's actually you know depression. It's it's ju- it's exhaustion, and 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 sometimes you're, you're almost. You're almost like on drugs. Your 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 brain gets so wonky mm. uh, with the things that happen, and so learning to push through seasons and learning, I'm not going to feel like this forever. Oh, wow. mm. Mm. So there's going to be something there, and so um, and so, you can't, wait, you can't wait, push yourself. Yeah. So there's a moment in it where your body says you can't do it, and your emotions say we don't want to do it, and you should give up, and then you don't, mm-hmm. and you realize those were both lies. Yeah. Yeah, and I, th- I think that there's a spiritual strength to gr- every great athlete. So there's what the body can do, there's what the mind can do, and then there's what the spirit can do. Uh-huh. And so uh, in an Ironman, for me, you know, my fastest time is 11 hours. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's my fastest time. Um, and it's partly because the swim is so taxing. A pro will do it in eight, eight and a half hours. Wow. But they get to start on their own. They don't have to right. swim with the rest of us, right. you know, little people. Yeah. Um, and people help them anyways. But... Uh, the, so it, it's just, it's moving through a myriad of things. Your body can only store two hours of nutrients. So no matter what mm. you've eaten, if you exercise for two hours straight, your body's completely depleted. Mm. So you have to manage throughout the race eating. Wow. So if you don't eat, you, you won't yeah. finish. I don't care right. if you're the most fit person on earth. Okay. You know, a fit person can run a marathon probably without eating. They can't do another one. Mm. Mm-hmm. They're done. Right. So you take one of those amazing Kenyans, yeah. right, and they, they do it in two hours. Well, if you ask them to do it again without eating, right, mm-hmm. it can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Your body shuts down because, it, it, you know, it's going to start robbing your bones, your muscles, your tendons, right, right. your brain. Yes. Yeah. And people go crazy. And so, so it's not a good thing to have your brain be yeah. eaten alive by your marathon yeah. needs. That's no. why I never do two marathons in a row. <laughs> yeah, That's why I never do it. My pause. Yeah. It's a principal thing. <laughs> so I think it's actually what I would say is for any leader – Actually, the most difficult aspect of, of it is the anxiety before you start. Mm. And I think that that's just the principle wow. in life is what's the scariest part is before you're doing it. Yeah. Once you're in it, and I know you guys are, are speakers, that moment of, okay, I'm going to go out there. I don't want to be terrible. I hope this isn't awful. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever laid, laid an egg in front of people, but I have. Mm-hmm. And one, one of us has. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And, hey, let's put that on the Internet. Um, <laughs> You know, the good old days, you could stink and only your congregation yes, knew it. Now exactly. the world knows only it. Only one uh-huh. service. Yeah. The, the poor 815. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that, you know, it's just, it's learning to work through the stages in life. And, and, and I've been a pastor now 21 years at Sandals. And there were seasons where I thought I couldn't go further, yeah. Yeah, especially my mid-30s. Uh, and I've talked to a lot of guys in their mid-30s who just really hit a lull. Okay. Um, and, and I don't know about for you guys, but what I imagined my ministry life would look like, what I imagined my professional life would look like, you know, I was being outpaced by guys like Driscoll. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, Perry Noble. Mm-hmm. You know, those, the, we're all the same age. Mm-hmm. And you say, Matt Brown, you say, who? And so just dealing with, okay, he, you know, here's my life. And, 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 and this isn't what it was going to be. We had church conflict with church growth, um, you know, staying in love and marriage, right? You know, okay, I mean, so in our 30s, we've been married 15 years. We got mm-hmm. to work through some real issues. Um, and, and then dealing with my own issues, my own egos, and, and, and really just, okay, this isn't going to last forever, and I can enjoy where God has me. Yeah. And so I think that's what the Iron Man, finding peace and joy in the midst of pain and, mm. uh, and really learning to enjoy that and be like, right. What makes it great is the pain. Like, mm. I don't want to get to the end of my life and not have an, I don't want to not have suffered. You know, I'm in Hebrews right now. I, yeah, in my own personal quiet time. And, yep. and when the author of Hebrews is talking about Jesus, it said he, he learned the joy of serving God through suffering mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that, you know, with tears and loud bursts, the Lord heard his mm. prayers. Mm-hmm. So Jesus had to hurt, and it, there was something in that that caused 
a, a unique relationship even between father and son for God to hear. And so um, I have worshiped God uh, in the middle of a, a marathon. Mm. You know, I mean, no music, no, no, you know, the, the pros have already won. They've already done the interviews. Yeah. The right, papers have right, already right, gone. Right, right. And the crowd is thinned because, you know, I'm yeah. three hours behind. Right. But just with tears in my eyes, you know, when you get to mile 20 on the marathon, you realize there's yeah. nothing that's going to stop me. Wow. wow. You know, to, yeah. to, to, you know, mile 20 on the marathon, that's like Mount Everest. Yeah. 20 yeah. to 26 is like, yeah. yeah, it's the greatest thing. You know, I mean, I never gave birth, but, you know, just the, the ending of like, Good. hey, this is over, you know. <laughs> so um, it, it's, it's just beautiful. You feel like you did something. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, you know, when you cross the finish line, literally the guy says, Matt Brown, oh. you're an Iron Man. Well done, my yeah. good and faithful right? servant. That's, that's what he says, you yeah. know, and they announce it, you know, and yeah. you're just like, I can't believe that just happened. And uh, so, you know, you have seasons, I'll never do this again. Why do I do this? I hate right. this. And, and so I haven't been back here to uh, uh, Southwest Church since the Ironman. Mm-hmm. So when I left, I was like, never again. And, and we're here and I'm looking over at the finish line and I'm going, oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh, but wow. it was bad. It was yeah. bad. It was bad. You know, well, Francis Chan, he's talked a lot about saying the American church has lost its theology of pain. What you're mm-hmm. saying is we invite despair by not confronting discouragement. Yeah. You know, like it's then in that moment where you go, I'm tougher than I think. Yeah. I actually can do more than I think. God has built me and strengthened me. There is a artificial limit. Yeah. And it is my it's my requirement <clears throat> to live a life worthy of the calling I've received to press. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Through that. Now, let me ask you. So that's the negative side. That's the challenging side. Here's my question. And, and you kind of answered with the worship, but do you have those like ascending moments too? Like, like so I get up, I go to work out. It's painful right, for the right. first 15. Mm-hmm. It's tolerable for the next 15. And most of the time it doesn't happen. But every once in a while, there's this thing where I go, I should open a gym. Yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and then I see myself, you know, later and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. What was I thinking? But there is like an, a, there's an ascendant yeah. moment mm-hmm. too where the pain does go away. Right, right. No, and it's beautiful. And, and here's the thing is with effort and discipline, the pain becomes less and less. Mm-hmm. Like when you, the worst part of your life is when you start so running. I say that again. Everyone needs to receive that in there because we all want to get out of the pain. Right, yeah. The, but you got to embrace the pain to get out of the yeah, pain. Yeah, the, the pain, when you do something over and over again, the pain becomes less and less. Your mm-hmm. body adapts. And that's the thing that makes that's amazing is God has... He's given us a body that adapts and it listens to us and it, and it follows us. And we can do way more than we think. And I think what you said is with working out, you know, there's always a couple stages. The first stage is always, I don't want to. And that's why people don't mm-hmm. work out. And then you start, it's why am I doing this? And mm-hmm. then you're in the middle of it. It's I can't do this. But then the end, what you're talking about is I did it. Mm-hmm. And that's the four stages. And, um, and, and, and it's an incredible thing. It, you know, it, it's just an incredible thing. Like you, you, you both have kids. You know, you watch your mm-hmm. wife labor and struggle. And um, with our son especially, you know, every time my wife would push, uh, her heart rate would drop and my son's yes. heart rate would yes. drop. Yes. Well, yes. they didn't yes. have a monitor on me. Yeah. But yeah. I guarantee you, <laughs> wow. you know, like, like, you know, it's like life, death, life, death, you know. And, um, but then, you know, my son came out and you, and you forget. Yeah all that mm. pain and my wife's crying and it's a boy and, and I can't believe this. And, you know, they told us he was a girl. Don't tell him. Yeah, yeah. They told us that he was going to be a girl. His name was Trinity Monroe, uh, our third daughter. A little and so, ultrasound fail. Yeah. 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 So, um, they said sometimes the boys put their hands, boys mm. in the women in the womb, put their hands here, boys mm. in the womb mm-hmm. on their stuff. Mm-hmm. So do we, can yeah. we get that? Did that get on? Yeah. yeah. Did we have the, Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dalton, we had the right widescreen. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, the highest point of testosterone in, in, a, in, a, in a man's life before puberty is at eight weeks. Oh, wow. Eight weeks in the womb. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Because that's what makes us men. The Y chromosome, right? It's hitting, yep. it's hitting him and it's literally reprogramming the body. Oh, wow. So we're all girls at first. Yes. And then the Y chromosome turns us to a man. Mm-hmm. So and Andrew, you've stayed in touch with your feminine side, though. Yes. I want to say that. Mm-hmm. It hasn't. Well, your white European. Didn't, yes. <laughs> a little Lacoste on top on, yeah. Exactly. A little French. Now, this guy's a great triathlete, and that's a great topic, but I want, he's one of the best. Everyone I talk to goes, why aren't you more like Matt Brown when you teach oh. the Bible? Mm-hmm. And we've been talking, this is what pastors Sorry. do when they get together. We talk sermon series, and we 
plagiarize from each other shamelessly. Um, but but what do you guys? Let's start here. What did you do in your break out here at? at uh, yeah. Southwest right. So, so mine was on being an authentic leader. And so, you know, Craig Rochelle says people want to follow a leader that's real rather than always right. And I, mm -hmm. I agree with that. So the vision of Sandals Church is to be real with yourself, God, and others. And I think people, uh, so much of the reason why I think people don't connect with Christian church or with uh, Christianity is because it seems fake. And so the worst thing that you can do in your ministry is to try to be something you're not. And, um, you know, we were talking in the car um, here when we were talking about a major evangelist um, and I was sharing with him, the struggle isn't the gospel, the struggle's you. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the lost person sitting there, the first question is not, do I believe Jesus? It's, do I believe you? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I believe you're authentic? Do I believe that yep. you're real? And that was a real, real shift from him because, you know, he's post Billy Graham. Right. Where really he's reminding people of, you know, people mm -hmm. respected the authority of pastor. You know, this is, that's pre-scandal, pre all right. this stuff. Right. But it's really like, I don't know if I trust you. And so, so mine was on, on being yourself, and one of my favorite verses in the Bible is, Lord, keep, give me the privilege of, of keeping me from lying to myself. Mm -hmm. Teach me the joy of your decrees, yeah. you know, Psalms. And, and, and God wants me to be real. And I was a person that really, really struggled being, being real because uh, I have a lot of shame um, mm -hmm. just in my personality. I'm a person that's afraid that you, you won't like me if you really know me mm -hmm. um, because I'm never going to be, you know— uh, like there's an aspect to teaching that is performing. Mm -hmm. uh, right. You know, if right. I, you guys probably haven't seen me preach, but if I act like that all the time, I'm going to pass out at 11 o'clock every day. Like mm -hmm. I can't, I can't be that guy all the time, but I am that guy. And, but I'm also using my giftedness. But like when, I don't know if you guys, but you get your hair cut maybe from somebody at the church and they're like, wow, you're different. I'm like, yeah, you got scissors next to my ears. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little different. Right. Right. And it's, and it's okay to not have to be something. That's where I think like guys like Jim Carrey, these performers go nuts because they're always on. Right. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, right, you shut off. So I, I think, you know, and I, I talked on the Enneagram. A lot of people here at the conference have said, oh, you're the Enneagram guy, which I guess um, I, th I may be the only pastor who's done a series on the Enneagram. Okay. Um, I don't know that to be true, but I mm -hmm. seem to come up consistently with Google. But it's a series called You, and it's just discovering who God's made you to be. Mm -hmm. and, um, and God loves us. Like, he died yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it's just, it's just about being you and, and being as real as you, as you possibly can. And, and so that's what I talked about, sharing your weaknesses and your sins. I actually brought some of my staff up and said, tell me when the last time I came up to you and, and confessed sin to you was. And they gave examples. Uh, you know, James 5, 16, confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. So we confess our sins to God to be forgiven, and I confess them to you to be mm. healed. Mm -hmm. And and that's what keeps people from wait, moving wait, forward. Wait, 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 wait. You're, you're throwing out so much good sorry, stuff. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Say that one again. We confess our sins to God to be forgiven, but we mm -hmm. confess them to each other to be healed. That's so, so like, good. let's say, let's say I, you know, I look at pornography or something, I, I can confess that to God. But when I look at my wife's eyes, mm -hmm. yes. and I say, yes. honey. Very good. Yeah. I looked, I looked at porn, and that's a sin against you, our marriage, mm -hmm. and who God made me mm. to be. Will you forgive me? And I see the pain in her eyes. Man, that, that, is, that is the most powerful, motivating thing you'll you ever see. You become more human. You yeah. become more mm -hmm. empathetic. Because you, you actually get to see yeah. what sin does. The so. sin mm -hmm. in Genesis yeah. isolates yeah. us. Yeah. It's not just good to interact with God. we gotta, we got to go, why are we hiding from God and each right. other? That's really good, man. It's really so good. So I practice that on a regular basis. And, and, you know, the truth is I sin every day. I don't confess every day. Mm -hmm. And I need to be better at that. But it's important that people hear from me, you know, that I confess my sin. We don't follow yeah. Matt Brown at Sandals. We mm. follow Jesus. Yeah. You know, he is without sin. And I think as pastors, you know, um, we're all afraid that if they knew the real us. Um, so funny story real quick. We've had security issues. And so we had to put cameras all around our mm -hmm. house. It's a great idea, right? Keeps us safe. Well, it doesn't just film intruders. It actually, it actually films me. <laughs> oh. So, uh, yeah. So they put the cameras up, and um, Tammy and I got into an argument. It was pretty, pretty heated. This is about a year and a half ago. And I said, I just, I just got to go outside. I just got to go outside. And I wasn't thinking. Right. And she had rearranged the patio furniture. And so I go outside. The motion light that's new goes on. Boom. Yeah. Now I'm blind. I trip over the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the... The thing you lay on on your bed. The lounger. The lounger. Yeah. I trip over the lounger. I go DEF CON 10. I lose <laughs> my mind. I pick this chair up and I smash it on the ground. We're going to put a special link to this at the yeah. end of the show. I, I smash <laughs> it on the ground. And my wife just starts laughing. And I'm irritated. And she just, 
you know, and I look over and there's <laughs> the, the camera. camera. <laughs> and I know my tech team at Sandals yeah. Church is going to watch this whole thing because right. they're getting it set up. And it's right. triggered right. by motion. Right. <laughs> So they're on. So I got to go to my tech team, and I'm like, okay, guys, let's talk about the lawn chair incident. You know, <laughs> and, and 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 the truth is, they got to see the real Matt Brown mm-hmm. in, in a moment of weakness, losing his mind. Because marriage, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I can get frustrated with my wife, and we cannot mm-hmm. agree on mm-hmm. life, mm-hmm. Yeah. things, anything. That's more you know. Kelly's role, the frustration yeah. Yeah, in right. our marriage. <laughs> so, but that was embarrassing, and but it's real. Yeah, you know, uh, totally I mean, real. it happened, and so I think you know we got to be careful in ministry that we don't just tell our wins, we talk about our losses. Because yeah, most so guys, yep. most of our, our, our families are sitting in church because they got some losses. Yeah. You know, the guy that's killing it at life, it's probably not in our church. You know, yes. he, why do I need that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one that's going, man, my marriage is falling apart. My kid's got an opioid addiction. I don't think my marriage is going to make it. And I haven't told her I got fired. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I always say too, the problem with nowadays is we're setting up pastors and leaders as celebrities. Mm-hmm. And for, you know, celebrity is toxic. It just is. Yeah. It is. It's toxic to people that handle it well, and it's very toxic to people that don't have the emotional urge. And there's just only one celebrity in Christianity. Yeah, people Jesus, are getting yeah. tired of hearing me, but it's Jesus. Yeah. It doesn't end well when everything on our Instagram says, I am a perfectly devout person. Right. Follow me. Yeah. It ends well when I say, I am preaching at me first yeah. and hoping this rapnel gets you. Yeah. That's when it ends well. Yeah. And this is, this is good to hear you doing it's good. that. It's good. Yeah. Have you guys ever had that moment where the Holy Spirit speaks to you through your own mouth? Oh, mm. totally. Oh. I, yes. Like I, have gotten, I call it the weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. side. <laughs> I mean, I've honestly. I've so filleted. Yeah. I'm like, that just rolled out of my huh. mouth. And that's when you realize it is a holy calling. And yeah. you're just like, good Lord. I don't know if anyone needed to hear that, yeah. but I sure did. Does this happen to you, man? Uh, I preached something. I, we preached on conflict a year and a half ago. And I love this topic. And I think I'm really good at it because I had a lot of conflict in my family of origin. Mm. And I hate it. So then when I discovered what the Word of God had to say about it, I became very passionate about going, okay, here's the better way. Yeah. And so I'm preaching on it. I love this message. It's James chapter 4. Why do you fight and argue? You slander each other. Yeah, yeah. You ask from each other what you should only be asking of God. It's I'm getting the amens. I'm feeling mm-hmm. so good. I walk right out of our production room, our last mm-hmm. morning service, and one of my staff members makes a beeline for me. And she says, I'm so mad at you because this and that and the other thing. And, and I'm going, she's completely wrong. This is not appropriate. Doesn't she yeah. realize people are watching? And I, I should apply what I just got done teaching. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was just about to do everything against what I just taught. Mm. And then I went, oh, I see what you're doing, Jesus. Yeah. You're holding me accountable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're mm. holding me accountable. And then I kind of did what I just taught. And it worked, and she mm. settled down, and we had a great conversation. And but I just find if I teach it, I'm going to be held accountable to it, like within 24 hours. Yeah, mm-hmm. to, it's good to do. Yeah, it. absolutely. Matt, some questions for you because I, I want all of our viewers to know you. So, when do you feel l- fully alive? What What is it that you're doing you just makes you fully alive? The honest thing is, after the sermon in the lobby, mm. hugging people, meeting them, and hearing what God's done in their life. I, that that. That is, the, that is the greatest moment of my life. You know, man, th- I came to this church, and Jesus did this for me. It just, uh, you know, I, when you start a church, you do it for free. Um, I told mm-hmm. you I was telling our, our ki- my kids didn't know that, that when I started Sandals, I was telling them, Mom and I had this job, mm-hmm. and we did the church on the weekends. And my kids were like, I thought you always worked at Sandals. I said, well, we did, but that was our passion. Mm. Yeah. That was our passion. And uh, I, just, I just love... Um, I love I love pastoring people. I, I I love man. I love that. You know, some sometimes people are off, and, and you ha- you have to deal with that. But so many people, man, it's just so neat to see what what God does when you're faithful. And you know, Sandals is a 20 year uh, journey of being faithful and trusting God. And you know, we started literally with my wife, our one year old daughter, and and myself. And it was rough, rough. We didn't break a hundred for a year. Mm-hmm. For a year. Give, give us that little synopsis. You're telling us that because it. It was this before I did this. Yeah, so we, we, we grew steady for 10 years to about 2,500. Mm-hmm. So zero, zero, zero mm-hmm. to, to 2,500 for 10 years. We finally got a building. So Sandals moved like 26 times. Wow. wow. So in, where we were, our schools did not allow churches to meet in there. Right. Mm-hmm. So we constantly had to move. And, and you know, it was literally like worship with us if you can find us. It mm-hmm. was terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got our building, and we moved 13 miles. 
So we got to 2,500 and 1,000 people didn't move with us. Wow. See ya. Wow. Yeah. So we went to 1,500. We got there. We made some staff changes. We hit 3,000, 6,000, and now we're at 12,000. Mm-hmm. And that's literally in, in the last 10 years. So 2,500 to b- mm-hmm. about 12,000. And then we have... Um, we have an online community of 20,000 a week mm-hmm. that watch. And so we literally, you, you download that. They, they watch the sermon. They can give. They tell us how many people are watching. We take attendance. They're on groups. I mean, it's an online yeah. thing. Mm. And um, that's been incredible. So God has just done just uh, just amazing things. And it, it's just incredible to see what God can do with a little faithfulness. And, you know, we were in New Zealand. We went there for our, our 20th anniversary, and we were on the, on the pier in Auckland. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was with my family taking a picture, and this guy said, Can, you want me to take your picture? Sure. And he said, he said, it's just so good to see you here, Pastor Matt. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's he the said, opportunity. I watch every weekend. That's the opportunity. Wow. And I just Enjoy. was like, yeah. I remember knocking on doors, feeling so much rejection. I got bit by a dog. Mm-hmm. I got this, this. The first person I led to Christ, I was such an idiot. The first person I led to Christ was this stay-at-home mom, and her husband came home, and he said, if you ever come to my house again, Mm -hmm. I'll Mm -hmm. shoot you. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay. (laughs) I never, I I was just dumb. I was so excited. Somebody gave their life to Christ. I mean, you know, I mean, anybody who's done door to door, I don't even think people do that anymore. It's miserable. No, this they, is pre They come to my this house. Pre- yeah, yeah. Oh, they do geez. come to my house. They don't want to talk to you. They're mm-hmm. scared to death of a Jehovah exactly. witness. You know, I'm like, mm-hmm. no, I'm not. So, um, it was brutal, but, but God's been, God's been really, really good. And, um, I think it's helped me understand my, my role more, not get consumed with self. And I think being under the radar is actually a blessing. Yeah. I yes. really do. So, um, because I mean, right. You know, fame is, is, you know, it, it's, it's notoriety, but man, it's, it's also dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really, really dangerous. Yeah. And I've seen guys, good friends get mm-hmm. just killed by that, man. Yeah. Yeah. So we were allowed the last one we were talking with, uh, Sean from Green Bay and he said, I didn't hand in my outreach magazine stats this year because mm-hmm. it just became a distraction. Mm-hmm. We started w- thinking about that and he said, just felt good going we're just going to go grow this church as much yeah. as Jesus is going to have us. So Haley's giving me the indication that we're drawing a little close to time. So I want to do this. We love teaching. We, you know, the, my funnest thing is when we're teaching the Bible, verse right. by verse, <clears throat> word by word, and people are laughing and joy's coming in the room, conviction too. Yeah. And I just love to kind of just dig in and go, what are you guys teaching at Sandals? What, what's the last couple series you're doing? What are you in right now? What's kind of some of the best Bible content you're digging into right now? Yeah. So my heart's an evangelist. I mean, that's my heart. So my everything I do is how do I reach, you know, that lost person with, with, with the gospel? And so like we're in a series called the Ten Commandments right now, and it's 10 reasons everybody needs God. Mm. 10 reasons. So, and we think of commandments as I have tos and they're really blessings. Mm -hmm. How has the Lord blessed us? You know, Mm. um, you know, what would your life look like? What would the world look like if we were adultery free? Mm. I mean, Mm -hmm. what, what would the world like? I mean, I shared with our church just how California would benefit if we stopped stealing. Mm. So Mm -hmm. we just looked at two things. So the black market economy in California, uh, it robs literally $8.6 billion a year from the state. Mm. If China quit stealing our, our intellectual property, $600 billion mm-hmm. a year from California. Wow. So you figure 20%, so capital gains, 20% mm-hmm. tax on that. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't have to stop at it, Costco and yeah. show that lady yeah. your receipt. Yes. <laughs> it, you it could would just double go our, to the parking lot. It would double mall. our state budget. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Just stop stealing. And I asked our church, I said, I said, why, why on earth does God care if we steal from each other? Because he loves us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't so affect good, him man. at all. Yeah. And so, so, good, so we looked man. at a series called You. Uh, lost people oftentimes don't care about God, but they do care about them, mm-hmm. understanding themselves. Um, you know, and we just, we, I just constantly try to get my finger on the pulse of what's the loss, what question is the lost person asking? Mm-hmm. Um, and then what we do is, you know, so all of our small groups are discussion-based groups based upon the sermon. So we'll, we go deeper in two ways. We do the debrief. So any question you had about the text, I mean, literally, whatever it is, you can ask it. And then we have you know, small group discussion questions that are on the, on the sermon series to take it to a whole nother level. And, and that's been phenomenal for our church. Um, you know, we did a verse by verse, uh, we did a series called 252, uh, Luke and Acts is mm-hmm. 52, uh, chapters mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. So we, we did those together for a year. There's 52 weeks in the year. And we just went through Luke Acts, which you mm-hmm. guys know is one book yeah. right, right. separated. And, um, and that was phenomenal for our church. What does it mean to be a Christian? And then what does it mean to be the church? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we did that for a year. And, uh, cause we had grown so fast 
Uh, like this last year, we baptized 1,100 people in our church. It's incredible. So it's, you know, not quite 10% of our, mm-hmm. our congregation, they don't know anything. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You know, so like this, in two weeks when I get back, we're doing a mass wedding. Did I tell you about that? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you so did. when I tell preach, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I preach on adultery, I said, you guys got to, you know, you got to, I, I tell people, I, I pastor First Baptist Sodom and Gomorrah. That's, <laughs> that's where I am. Uh, our people don't know anything. You know, it's like, you know. I don't have time for points of Calvinism. I'm just trying to get you to quit, you know, yeah. sleeping with your sister or whatever it is you're uh-huh. doing. Knock it off. And um, I literally called people. If you're in a sexual relationship right now and you're not married, um, you need to end it, or you need to ask God, "Are we supposed to get married right now, today?" And so we had 66 couples say, "We're going to do it God's way." Wow. And they so went. Let me tell you, you challenged right your church to actually live up to a biblical standard, yes. and it didn't explode. It no. No. <laughs> We're going to do a mass wedding. Uh, I don't know when it is. I think it's right before I come to visit you guys at Bayside. We're wow. on a Friday night, so I'm paying for the DJ. I'm paying for the cookies awesome. and the, uh, and the ice cream awesome. and the cake. Uh, I think they each get to invite like 25 friends. I mean, we, our, our auditorium only holds like 2,500, so that's the limit. Um, you know, I'm, gonna take, I'm paying for the photographer, but they had to go through an eight-week class of what it means to get married because they need to understand it's a covenant, right? That they're agreeing to. And we had 66 couples that said, I'm going to do it God's way. And for me, that's a win. And we had some couples break up, which is also a win. Right. You know, uh, sex is not a reason to get married. Yeah, correct. That's just not right. So, um, but you know, if if you do love the person that is the one, why wouldn't you want God's blessing on your relationship? And, and, you know, I mean, we got flack, you know, I mean, we got, and, and actually, you know, some of the nastiest stuff we got was from parents. Totally. I want my kid to get a job, follow, not follow right. God. No, right. finish college. Like, like yeah, they got yeah. all these worldly things rather than righteousness. And I'm right. like, my job is not to call your kid to college. It's mm-hmm. to call them to God. And um, so I had some upset people, but. Probably but, not you know, doing it right if you don't get a few upset people oh, is mm-hmm. my general overall experience. So yeah. it's great, Matt. Yeah. I, like Good your, stuff. I like your so friend I love, under. I love sermon development, sermon ideas. Um, I love I love taking uh, old old truths and twisting it in a way that's appealing uh, to people that, that's catchy. You know, oh, I, I, you know, I wonder about that, and that's that's what I that's what I love. So it's awesome. So you are coming to be at our adventure campus, yeah, May fifth, first weekend, of yeah, fourth and fifth, yeah, fourth and fifth, fourth the Saturday and, fifth. and the Sunday. And yeah, and if um, there's any Bayside,ers you know that uh, graduated Hiram Johnson around 1990, man, that the, you're my you people. Have a family so, reunion, yeah, yeah, yeah. class reunion. Mm-hmm. If you taught high school, middle school, Matt was your guy. Come yeah. over to the Adventure Church, yeah, man. That weekend, we're really super eager uh, to have you, Matt. Yeah, I'm excited, totally excited what God's doing through your church and your life. You, do you have one final exhortation? For, for everyone that listens to the flip side here. Yeah, just, just man, rejoice that God brought you to Bayside. You have no idea how blessed you are. It's an incredible church. And, um, you know, my daughter was asking me, she just said, hey, would you care if I worked at Bayside? I said, I'd do backflips. Mm. I said, I'd do backflips. You guys don't have any idea of just God has placed you in one of the, the, one of the greatest churches in world history, and he loved you so much he put you in that church. And I, I just would say thank God for, you know, Ray starting it, you guys shepherding it, leading it, and just what God's doing. Every staff member I meet at Bayside, I just go, wow, wow. And, the, and those are your shepherds. Those are your leaders. And, uh, you know, so much of the criticism, you know, it's just jealousy. It's, a, it's envy. And, and that's what killed Jesus. So just, just keep celebrating <laughs> keep celebrating what God is doing. And I look forward to hanging out with you guys and maybe going to a Kings game. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't been in the new arena. Dude, yeah. you got to come back to the Kings, man. Yeah. The Kings are something, man. Yeah, we well, when I, when I grew up, you know, they, were, they weren't they were that good. They were like powder blue. Hey, and, hey right now, man. I'm their day is coming. Their yeah. day is coming. Zach Dutra is right off camera. He's one of the smartest leaders at Bayside. Uh, once you get the HR forms for his daughter yeah. lined yeah. up this afternoon. You got me, Dutra? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Praise God. Hey, thanks again for uh, tuning in to another episode of The Flip Side, where we just are trying to get the Bible in our lives every single day. No matter what age or stage you're at, we just kind of want to make God's truth not a Sunday thing, but our whole life thing. If you know someone who needs that, I want to ask you to share and follow and like. Amen. And also, subscribe and comment. Mm -hmm. Because if you leave some comments, man, we'll bring the questions up. Andrew's spectacular at answering those questions. And we'll always bring someone smarter than me in a quote to answer them. So give some challenging uh, questions to Pastor Andrew, and we'll answer them on the next episode of The Flipside. By the way, more special guests to come. So 
tune in. The next couple weeks, Thrive Southwest, we're pulling all these leaders in. Matter of fact, the next one, it's a big surprise, my favorite leader ever. It's gonna be here on the next flip side. Thanks for tuning in, we'll see you then. Mm -hmm.